Hi and welcome to another tutorial on the HTML canvas. Um, in a couple of the previous tutorials we looked at how to create lines and also how to style, uh, style lines. So in this tutorial we're going to start joining lines together to create different shapes. So first thing we need to do to get started is we'll add a canvas to our page in the body section and we'll give it an ID. So I'm going to call this my canvas. And I'll also specify the width and height, so width of 300 and a height of also 300. Okay, and then I'm going to add a style in the head section using the style tags. So inside those two style tags, I will specify um, the style for the canvas. So I'll refer to the canvas by its ID and I can add a background color. But for now, I'll just keep it um, as white, which is the default. And the, I'll add a border so we can actually see where the canvas is and how big it is when we preview it on the web page. So it'll be one pixel, solid, and black. So that's all we'll have for the style. We'll go back to the body section of the web page. And here we can use the script tags. And inside those script tags, we can add some JavaScript code and make a function to draw the line. So we'll start a new function. Uh, oops, we'll just give it a name first. So function will be called draw. And um, first thing we'll do is we'll set up the canvas um, to have all the available properties to use to um, draw lines and style lines. So we'll say var ctx equals document.get element by ID, so we use the get element by ID method, and we'll refer to the canvas by its ID, and we'll say get context 2D, and that line with the semicolon. All right, next thing we'll do is specify the line width, it can be 20, and the line cap, so the, end, the shape on the end of the line and we'll make it but for this example. All right, next thing is we need to add this um, statement here. So ctx.beginPath and then ctx.move2. So this is going to be the beginning of the line. So where the line actually starts, we'll specify where, where it will actually begin on the canvas. So we have, and I'll add comments here, we have x and y positions here. So the line will begin at an X position of 50 and a Y position of 50 on the canvas. Then we'll specify where the line will um, end. So we're just going to make a simple line here and then we'll come back and add more lines to it. So say ctx.line2 and then um, we also have X and Y positions here. X position of 150 and a Y position of 250 and we'll end that line with a semicolon. A um, couple of extra things that we need to do now is specify the stroke style. So ctx.strokeStyle equals, and we can specify a um, color here. So I'm gonna make it red. So I'll use that um, hexadecimal color code here for red. And then we can say ctx.stroke, all right, to actually um, make that line. So we have the function, which is called draw. Now we actually need the function to run when the page loads. So we'll have a window.onload event equal to draw. So it will run that draw function when the page loads. All right, let's have a look at this in the browser. And something is wrong. Uh, hmm. All right, let's have a look at the JavaScript console, see what's going on here. Unexpected token on line 14. Uh, okay, we're missing those brackets there. All right, so make sure you fix that up so you've got those brackets there on that function line. Let's go back and refresh the page. And there we have it. So there's our line. It's red, it has a thickness of 20, and the ends of the lines uh, um, they have a butt cap end on them. Okay, so that's the line cap that we're using. Um, all right, so now we can add another line. So we can say 
add another line here. And we can say ctx.line2 and we can add some new x and y coordinates. So we've got the line beginning, beginning at x50 and y50. Then it goes to uh, x position of 150 and y position of 250, which is here. And now we can specify um, where it will go to from there. So let's say 150 and 50. Alright, so now it goes up like that. Alright, and well, actually, let's change that a little bit. We'll make it 250. We'll make it 250 and 50. So refresh. There we go. Okay, so it's like a V shape now. So here we have it starting at X and Y positions of 50 and 50. X position here of uh, 150 and Y position of 250. <laughs> and then up here we have the line ending at X position of 250 and Y position of 50. All right, we'll add another line. CTX line two, and this time we'll go for, to X position of 50 and Y position of 150. Save and refresh. All right, there we go. All right, we'll make that the end of the line. Now we could um, we could also fill this in. So what we could do is after this bit here, CTX dot stroke, we could actually say CTX dot fill, and that will actually fill in this shape even though we haven't actually uh, completed the line. So it's going to fill it in from here to here to here. It's going to fill everything in there. And the default fill color is just black, but we could change the fill style if we wanted to. But I'll delete that. Uh, we could also get rid of the stroke. So we could still, um, actually what I might do is add that and then comment out ctx.stroke. And it's filled but the stroke is not actually showing, so we don't actually see that line. So um, that's something you can do is fill a line and then take the stroke away. All right, now we have a line cap of but, so the line cap options are, I'll add a comment here, line cap options are um, square, round, and but. All right, so let's have a look at um, square. Okay, um, so we've got square, we'll change it to round. All right, so now the line cap on those ends are round and we'll change it to but again. Oops. All right, back to but again. Okay, so we'll leave it as um, a but line cap for now. And I'll add another line here, ctx.line join. And there's a few different options we have here as well. So I'll just put here another comment. So line join options, uh, round, bevel, and mitre. All right, so let's make this round to start with. All right, so see where the lines join? It's now rounded off instead of being a sharp uh, edge there, or a sharp point, it's now rounded off. So I can have round, I can have bevel, which is flat on the ends, and I could have mitre, okay, which is sharp. All right, so we've got um, round, bevel, and mitre, all right, and um, the default there was that sharp mitre um, in there where the lines were joining. Okay, but we can also add some extra information there. So we can change CTX mitre limit. So this sets the maximum mitre length. And the mitre length is the distance between the uh, inner corner here, between the inner corner and the outer corner here of where these two lines actually meet. So where these two lines meet, the mitre limit will... Um, change the distance between the inner corner and the outer corner. So let's just change this, so say ctx.mitre limit. 
Um, and we'll can just we'll just make that one. Okay, so see how the distance here has changed now? It's actually flat on the end too. But if we change that to three, it's now sharp again and that uh, distance has increased there. So that's the miter limit. We can also add dashes to the line. All right, so um, what we can say is, we'll just add another line here, and we can say ctx.set line dash and we can add um, in here we can say 20 and maybe 20 and what this will do is add dashes um, on the line so the first value there is the length of the actual dash and the second value is the length um, of, the, of the gap between the dash so I'll save and refresh that. And now we have a dash line. And see how the actual dash is um, the same length as the gap between the dash? Well, we could change that. So we could change the gap to just 10. So now the actual gap is smaller. We could change it to 5. And now the gap is really small. We could also make the length of the dashes longer. So we could say 30 instead. And now we have longer dashes with smaller gaps. All right, so that's how to set the line um, dash or add dashes to your lines. Um, we can also change, so I'll just put that back to, um, let's say 20 and 10. We can also change the offset. So we can say ctx dot uh, line dash offset. And we could make that equal to say 20. And now we might just comment out that code for a sec and refresh it. So we've got we're back to those um, dashes of um, a length of 20 and a length of the, the gap, which is 10. So now I'll take that comment out and save and have a look at what happens. So the dash has actually moved along a little bit. So we could uh, do that again. We might say 40 this time and refresh and see how the dashes kind of move around a little bit. Okay, so you can fiddle around with the offset of the line dash if you like, but that's basically how to join lines together. So you just keep adding the lines CTX dot line to and just specify where you want the line to go to so um, say if we want to join these two lines up here again and close this and make a triangle then I can add another line here ctx dot line two and put it back to the beginning of the first line which was an x position of 50 and a y position of 50 and now we have those lines joined up all right, so that is basically how to join lines on the canvas and how to add dashes to the lines and um, change the style of where lines join and ends of the line as well. Thanks for watching.